hello guys this is weights lounge and in today's video we are going to be considering the integrated weight equation for first order now before we get into the study do like share and subscribe a first order reaction is simply a reaction whose concentration and rate increases by the same factor so which means if it is first order and you multiply the concentration by two the rate would also increase by two so if we are to express it for a given reaction a reacting to give a product you would have that if this is said to be first order the k of one will be represented and the rate law expression would be given as r is equals k one and then you have concentration of the reactant raised to power one so we don't need to indicate it this is an expression of first order because the power of the concentration is one now having said this the very next thing i would like to do is to write out the rate formula in relation to the difference in the concentration of the reactant and that's going to be minus change in concentration of a all over change in time if you have this we are going to now equate these two equations and then see where it leads us so we are not going to have negative delta a all over the t is equals k1 concentration of a now as i said let's get our similar variables to the same side and take the minus over so this is going to be delta concentration of a all over concentration of a equals minus k1 delta t now we are going to be integrating both sides so if we are to integrate both sides if we're going to rewrite this this would also be written as the integration of one over concentration of a delta concentration of a which is going to be equals the integrate minus k would remain constant so you have the integration of delta t with this said if you have the integration of one over a delta a according to your integral rule this is going to be converted or going to give us lean concentration of a for a given limit of final value of a and initial value of a and this is also going to be equals minus k1 t for a given limit of final value of t and initial value of t so let's get to work if we are to do this it means that we are going to have lean a final we could call it anything minus lean a initial which is the zero equals minus k1 we already know that eventually this is going to give us t so having said this this is one way of expressing the integrated rate law equation for first order so if you already have a knowledge of log you will find out that this minus when you factorize the log would actually turn to divide so we are going to do that this is going to be lean concentration of a of f which is the final value divided by concentration of a of zero and this is going to be equals minus k1 t okay having said this there are other ways of writing this thing and that is exactly what we're going to do so i'm going to have to take everything out of the board so that we can be able to utilize our space okay so with that said the the first expression we got was lean let me make sure it's clear as lean okay so we had lean concentration a final minus lean concentration of a initial equals minus k of one t that is the first expression the second expression we got was lean concentration of a final over concentration of a initial would now be equals minus k of one t okay the next thing we can actually do to get the third formula is to remove this minus sign by rearranging it so when we rearrange this we are going to have lean um, concentration a initial minus lean concentration a final and once this happens this is now going to be a positive value for k of one so you have that which means that we got a new equation which is lean concentration of a initial 
all over concentration of a final equals k1 t so with this said we've actually been able to derive four different versions of the same expression and we'll go ahead to derive a fifth one as we all know the lean also represents natural log and natural log is simply giving us 2.303 log to base 10 so if we happen to replace this we are now going to have log concentration of a of zero all over concentration of a of final equals kt <coughs> with this expression you can also get log concentration of a initial all over concentration of a final which is the remaining concentration after the reaction of course equals kt all over 2.303 okay with this expression the very next thing i would like to say is that when you consider your concentration of a the remaining concentration of a is simply gotten by the initial concentration minus the change so if we happen to say that the concentration of a is equals b and that the change is equals x the implication is that the concentration of a that is remaining will now be b minus x so if we put it in this equation we are going to have our expression log b all over b minus x is equals kt all over 2.303 so that is that about the different kinetic equations or integrated rate equations of your first order reaction the next thing we are going to do before i leave the first order is i would be showing the relationship between a graphical relationship between the final or remaining concentration and time so let's take this whole thing out for us to be able to understand that now if you are to write your expression imagine you had um a a a particular graph of b log b minus x to time and you are asked to give the exact slope of this graph and the value is actually going to be easy for us to decipher so let's get to work now so if you have that the kinetic equation or integrated um, expression for first order is giving us log b all over b minus x we remember that this is just initial concentration and final concentration initial concentration is b which means the final concentration will now be b minus the change the change is the amount that you removed you get so x is equivalent to the amount that is removed while b minus x is the remaining concentration after the reaction has occurred and we said that this is going to be equals kt all over 2.303 so what are we going to do with this let's like expand this and we'll get log b uh, minus log b minus x is going to be equals kt all over 2.303 now with this said we are going to have to push this guy over and when you push him over you find out that you have log b minus x subject of formula is going to be equals um negative log remember there is a minus behind here so negative log b uh plus kt all over 2.303 now if you look at this expression it's not looking so pretty and you know there's a lot of minus before so let's make it fine by multiplying everybody by a minus sign and then you finally get log b minus x is equals log b minus kt all over 2.303 now this is where it gets interesting if you remember your expressions for your graph equations which shows the dependence variable in and its relation to the slope and the intercept it is giving us y is equals um c plus m x now this y is an indication of what we refer to as the dependent variable c is the intercept m in this case is the slope of the graph or the constant while x is the non-dependent variable so if we are to relate this equation to this it means that our y would now be log bracket b minus x 
equals the intercept will now be log b and then you have that the slope would be minus k all over 2.303 while the non-dependent variable would now be given as t so imagine you have a scenario where you are asked to find the intercept of a particular equation and that equation has to be an equation involving the the integrated law expression what are you supposed to do the intercept is simply going to be log b why because according to this expression it falls or coincides with this particular guy here because we have that the relationship between this log b minus x and the slope is a negative relationship a negative relationship simply indicates an inverse proportionality so just have that in mind that a negative relationship indicates an inverse proportionality so because log b minus x and the slope are related in a negative way we will have a downward movement meaning that as b minus x is increasing you have that the time should be decreasing but as or as the time is increasing b minus x is decreasing so have that in mind that a negative or inverse expression that is one over expression would indicate a downward slope and because of that you find out that our slope of this particular graph just as we found out is going to be exactly equals minus k all over 2.303 so if you are given a question and you are not given a graph but you are asked to find the slope of a particular expression relating log b minus x to t just with this particular law you will know that the slope is exactly equal to minus k all over 2.303 i presume this video has been helpful thank you very much for watching